Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I want to uh, share a very short word I received from the Holy Spirit. It's a word of knowledge, even though I don't fully understand what it means necessarily. Um, but right before I do that, uh, I feel like I need to say that something amazing is happening right now. And it, it has nothing to do with me. It actually has everything to do with you. There are people that clicked on this video that are watching this who don't realize it, but you are here hearing what's being said right now because God loves you and he has a plan for your life because God was thinking about you today. So this is the word I heard. I heard two words and the Holy Spirit, he actually shared more with me about this, but he only allowed me to share two words. And those two words are Michigan and landslide. Michigan and landslide. So I don't fully understand <laughs> what this is referring to. I believe we will see. Um, it, it, you know, it may take a little while, but I believe we will see what this is referring to at some point soon. So this is what else, this is the other thing the Lord asked me to share. He specifically asked me to talk about salvation, and this is why. <laughs> it's because I believe there are people who have felt like you know one. There, there's different forms of landslides, you know, and that could be a metaphorical thing. Obviously, it could be. I don't know, a political thing. It could be something in, in, out in nature. There, there's one type of landslide where, you know, it's almost like a rock slide where stuff is like falling down, sliding down. You know, stuff is collapsing, it's dangerous. Um, you don't want to be in a landslide if it happens. There's a type of landslide that I believe happens sometimes in our lives. It's very similar to a real life landslide in that stuff just continues to happen it's just, it's like we're sliding down this slippery slope and it just keeps getting worse. One thing after another. We keep getting hit by one thing after another. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has sent specific people to this video, whether you realize it or not, to hear this. The reason why many, even Christians, I'm, I'm talking to, to unbelievers and believers here, people that have met Jesus personally, and even those, you know, that are watching that haven't, things Sometimes God allows things to happen, especially a continual, you know, like a sequence of events to get our attention, to make us realize and to open our eyes to the idea that there's something not right spiritually. There's something either in our heart or our belief system or the way we see God or the way we're trying to approach God, whatever it may be, something is off in the spiritual realm. And when something's off there, it's going to affect sometimes our lives. God's going to allow things in a sense to get shooken up so that we'll look at, hey, what is happening here? What is God trying to say to me right now? And if we never go and fix, you know, we try to fix all the things that are continually happening, but if we never go and fix the root issue, the root problem, then there's no guarantee that these other things are ever gonna fall into place. And this is the word he gave me. Talk about salvation. Even if, you're, even if you know Jesus and you've been saved, or, e or even if you haven't, it's never too late for Jesus to be your Savior. It's never too late for him to step in. And for a lot of us, that's what we really need. We've tried to do it on our own. We need a Savior to step in. We need someone to come in from the outside who is more powerful, wiser, kinder than we are to fix things. You know, it's like that picture. You, As a child, you might not have ever had someone who you could fully trust, you could fully rely on. Maybe you did. But it's, it's like a picture of a loving guardian, someone who is there to protect you, someone who is there to save you when you get into trouble. God wants to be that for you today. And if you know that you don't have a personal relationship with him, this, he is not someone you talk to every day and you actually hear from on a regular basis. And I'm not necessarily talking about hearing from God audibly, but what I'm talking about is communication with him, either through the Bible or through the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. God wants to be your friend. Jesus wants to be your friend. And he wants to be your friend who's also your savior. And he wants to walk with you. And if you know you don't have that, I believe God has sent you 
to this video right now for a reason. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Trinity, God is one, but he also exists in three persons. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God talks about how the wages of sin is death. And that's not physical death here on earth. You know, everybody dies eventually. But it's talking about spiritual death. It's talking about an eternity separated from God. It's talking about the difference between heaven and hell. But this is what's so amazing. Even though Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He is God, God loved us so much, even in our sinful state, that Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago, and he lived a life as a man. He lived a perfect life. And then what happened was, people rejected him, and they even killed him. They, they put him up on a cross to be crucified, and then he died. And what people didn't realize was happening in that moment was there was a debt that needed to be paid. And that debt was our sin. It was our debt. It was a debt that none of us could ever pay. See, because none of us can ever be good enough to pay for the sins that we've committed. We can never outdo the bad. As much as we would like to think we can, but Jesus could. And the reason he could was because he was perfect. And he had no debt to pay. So when he paid a debt in dying on the cross, he actually paid our debt. Something, a very amazing spiritual truth was happening in that moment where Jesus was taking our place. He took your place. So if you, <laughs> this is what's so amazing about that, is God does not require us as human beings who are flawed to live up to some standard before we can receive that gift, before we can receive what Jesus did for us and be forgiven of our sins. What the word says that God requires is actually that we just believe what Jesus did, that we just put our hope in that gift, in his sacrifice. And when we do that and we repent of our sins, which literally just means to change our mind about sin, when we say, God, I don't wanna be a sinful person anymore. I want you to save me, to forgive me, to redeem me, then God steps in. He starts a personal relationship with us, that relationship I was talking about. And then we are completely forgiven of our sins, past, present, and future. And he gives us the ability through his grace, which is his unmerited favor, to actually change and to be more like Jesus in the way we live. So I'm encouraging you to pray with me right now and this is a prayer of salvation. It's not a magical prayer. The prayer cannot save anyone. Only Jesus can save us. But what this prayer is, is it is a decision. You're talking to God and you're telling God, I want this. I, I am desperate for it. You're turning your heart and your life over to him. Pray with me right now if you know you need this. Do not wait. Do not put it off. Today is the day of salvation. And this salvation can change your life completely. Father God, I believe that you love me, not because of what I've done, but because you are loving and you are good. And I believe, Jesus, that you came to earth as a man. You lived a perfect life and you died on a cross to pay the penalty for my sin. You took the punishment I deserved so that I could be forgiven and free. So I just repent of all sin right now. Everything that I've ever thought that was wicked, everything I've ever done that was evil, I turn my eyes away from that. I turn my heart away from it and I turn my eyes to you, Jesus. And I ask that you forgive me and I thank you for doing so. Father, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit the way you promised in Scripture so that I could walk with you every day and be your friend so that I could know you personally. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
And I just feel the Holy Spirit. Uh, I just feel his presence right now, y'all, but I also feel him imparting that to people, that friendship, that voice. People who have made the decision right now to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And he's saying, I'm gonna start speaking to people in your heart. And here's my encouragement to you. Start reading the Bible every day. Get into the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The book of Romans is an amazing place to start as well. But read through the whole Bible. Make a decision. Say, you don't have to do it real fast, but make a decision to read through the whole Bible. And when you read, ask God to speak to you through that word, through the Holy Spirit. He's going to make those truths in Scripture jump off the page at you. He is going to change your life with his words. God can do it. It's not impossible. All things are possible to those who believe. When you are living a life of belief in Jesus, you're going to see the impossible happen. I love y'all so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time.